Okay, and let's see if we can find a verse. It's good. Oh. There's one beautiful verse, but I don't know where it is. Uh, it describes the passing of Haridas Thakur. These chapters are quite long, so I'm not sure where it is. It gets right to the point where he's yeah, just keep going down the page and we'll see. Yeah, keep going down. Really illustrates the beauty of Haridas Thakur. Keep going, yeah. Okay, uh, okay, you're coming close to it now. Oh yeah, okay, so there it is, verse number 57, I think. Yeah, 56 is also saying while chanting the holy name of Sri Krishna Chaitanya, he gave up his ear of life and left his body. No, 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 the next one down, 57. Yes, mm -hmm. Well, actually, you go to 56, and I'll do 56 and 57 like that. Yes, good. Kumagyan timidandasya ginajana salakaya chaksun militamena. Tasmai Sri Guruvena Mahanama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Sri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tiname Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Puchari Ne Never Says Nasunya Vari Pastyat Yade Satarne Panchakopa Turupis Chakri Pasindu Pyeva Chapatitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha uh, Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakti Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Chaitanya Kripaya Yena Bhakti Nama Siddhodita Namami Harida Samtam Bhakti Nam Sukadam Gurum a beautiful verse describing the glories of Srila Haridas Thakur as the Guru, the Acharya of the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. <laughs> the life of Srila Haridas Thakur is glorious in all respects. His actual appearance in the world is not known to anyone. No one knows when his actual birthday, but he was born in a place called Bordwan in what is now known known as Bangladesh. And he was born in a very obscure family, an Islamic family. It's interesting to see that how Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu organized his movement, that he, he had the person who was known as, as we see, we, we refer to Haridas Thakur as Namacharya. Srila Haridas Thakur, Namachari. So he teaches the science of chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. He is the most glorious person in all of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's devotees, followers, associates who emphasize the importance of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. He chanted 333,333 names of God every day which is 192 rounds of japa every day. And you will see that uh, he was born not in a, a typical Hindu family or Bengali family or anything, but he was born in an Islamic family. Lord Chaitanya wanted to show, and he did this with many of his devotees, that, um, that it's not by birth that one becomes qualified or becomes expert in devotional life. It is by the mercy of the Lord. 
So to give that indication, he gave the label or the name to a person who was born in a family which was considered to be outcasts. And that person is considered to be the, be the best of all devotees, Srila Haridas Thakur, just to show the power of Krishna consciousness. And of course, we also indicate the power of Lord Chaitanya's mercy also. So Srila Haridas Thakur is a perfect example of someone who, who is materially unqualified, but spiritually fully qualified to show that material qualifications have nothing to do with spiritual practice, spiritual advancement. Mm -hmm. so this is Mahaprabhu. And he empowered Haridas Thakur to be the Namacharya. And at the same time, he also empowered him with one of the most amazing and most important qualities that is necessary for the execution of devotional service and that is tolerance. Srila Haridas Thakur is the epitome of tolerance. Mahaprabhu, or is mentioned in the life of Mahaprabhu in one verse by Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, that there are four persons who have, each of them have a particular outstanding quality that no one should try to imitate. For Srila Haridas Thakur, it was tolerance. For Srila Sanatana Goswami, it was humility. For Srila uh, Ramananda Roy, it was dira, uh, becoming uh, undisturbed, even in the most disturbing situation. And for uh, finding, uh, keeping religious principles foremost, despite the persons involved, that was uh, Damodar Pandit. And I'll explain each one of them. Srila Haridas Thakur is known as the person who was beaten in 22 marketplaces because he refused to stop chanting. He was arrested, put in front of the Kazi, and was accused of deviating from his religion and taking up the religion of the Hindus. When Haridas Thakur responded to that, he said, what is the problem? Sometimes a Hindu becomes a Muslim and sometimes a Muslim becomes a Hindu. Of course, they didn't like that at all. And that made them even more angry at Haridas. And so they threatened him with, with capital punishment unless he gave up the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And his response was, even if you cut my body into a hundred pieces, each one of these pieces will be chanting Hare Krishna. <laughs> so they could understand that there was only one thing to do. And so they sentenced him to die by being beaten in, 20, in marketplaces. Now there were 22 marketplaces and this, this punishment was, they tie up a person and drag him along the ground and then these big, powerful <coughs> men with big whips, they would be beating the person <coughs> until they died. And uh, so no one had gone past one or two marketplaces. And so there were 22 marketplaces. So they began the execution process. Now, people from the local area, when they saw this great saint being punished in that way, they tried to stop the, uh, the executioners, but they were unsuccessful. And Srila Haridas Dakar was being beaten, and he lived through all 22 markets. And not only did he live through it, but he was chanting the holy names continuously without deviation while he was being beaten. Later on, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to Srila Haridas Thakur, when I saw what those, what those torturers were doing to you, I came all the way from Vaikuntha and I was about to kill both of them. But my chakra, which I had brought in to sever their heads, would not move from my finger. And the reason why is because you were praying for them to forgive them and give them Krishna consciousness. Your prayers were so strong that my chakra could not leave my hand. 
So I was thinking, how, what should I do to protect my devotee? So I decided to put my body over your body and accept the punishment myself. And then the Lord opened up his cloth and he showed it on the back of his back, there were the whip marks were on the back of the Lord. When Haridas Thakur saw that, he fainted. He couldn't tolerate the fact that the Lord accepted the beating. But Haridas, he was so tolerant and he was so forgiving at the same time that it says that no one should try to imitate his level of tolerance. Srila <laughs> um, Haridas Thakur was not, not only chanting 333,333 names of God every day, but he was also preaching Krishna consciousness. So he didn't spend all, only his time chanting, he was also very active in preaching. Um, there are many beautiful stories in the high life of Srila Haridas Thakur. One of the outstanding stories, there's a, there are many outstanding stories also, actually. But one of them, one was he, um, um, he was, uh, he had attended an assembly gathering at the house of Raghunath Das Goswami. Now, Raghunath Das Goswami's parents, Jagadish Majumadara and uh, Govardhan Majumadara, were big jaminders, landowners, and they also worked for the government. They were tax collectors. And they would get, keep a portion of the taxes that they collected. At the same time, they also were quite wealthy. They had so much land. It is says that these personalities were so rich that they would be considered to be billionaires in today's society. And their son was Raghunath Das Goswami. Hari Das Thakur came to the assembly when there was a meeting that was called by these two brothers. And they were discussing philosophical and spiritual topics. Now, Haridas Thakur, when he entered, everyone could understand that he was the most advanced. So immediately, <clears throat> the two brothers gave him the seat of honor, washed his feet, honored him in so many ways, and asked him to become the presiding speaker in the assembly. And then <clears throat> Haridas started to speak about the glories of the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. <clears throat> and while he was while he was speaking, he indicated that <clears throat> that chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, <clears throat> one can even surpass the benediction of liberation by chanting. He said, in, liberation is insignificant. Simply by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, one can reach the perfection of life, pure love of God. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> In that assembly, there was one very uh, aristocratic Brahmin. His name is Gopal uh, Chakravarti. And uh, Gopal Chakravarti was he was quite learned. He was also very attractive looking. He was very handsome and quite expert at speaking. When he heard what Srila Haridas Thakur had said, he became offended. And he interrupted Srila Haridas Thakur. He is saying, he said, you're saying, he's accusing Haridas, that in the scriptures, that liberation, which takes so many lifetimes to achieve, is insignificant and easily uh, attained by simply chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. This we cannot tolerate. Wherever you, this information you're giving us is not, is incorrect. And then Haridas remained quiet. And then Srila Vishwanath I mean, uh, Gopal Chakravarti Thakur said, if 
what you say is not true, may your nose fall off. He actually cursed Haridash. When the assembly, including the two brothers, Go, Go, Govardhan and Jagadish Mandavadari heard that, they became really upset and offended. The Haridas Dakor could see that they were, the assembly was getting disturbed. So he said, actually, if what I'm saying is not true, then my nose should fall off. And when everyone heard that, they became really unhappy. And then Majumadara, both of the brothers, they became really angry at Gopal Chakravarti. And he was, he was employed by them. So they fired him from his job and threw him out of the assembly. A couple of days later, it was understood that Gopal Chakravarti, his nose fell off. <laughs> the curse or the blasphemy he directed against Srila Haridas came back to him. And his beautiful face was no longer beautiful anymore. <laughs> and um, he came down with leprosy and he lost his nose. So when Haridas Thakur heard about that, Haridas was feeling very unhappy that because of him, this person had to suffer. But that was the Lord's, uh, the Lord was also angry that his pure devotee was being criticized in this very horrible way. <laughs> Another particular story, which we're all familiar with, is <clears throat> there was one uh, governor. His name was Ramachandra Khan. And he was governor in the area where Srila Haridas Thakur was living. And that's in the area of, not fully, I think it was in the area of Burdan, Burdwan. Uh, it's in, I can't remember, I've been to the place actually. But Haridas Thakur was preaching and chanting in that area. Now this governor, he became envious of Haridas because Haridas was becoming popular amongst all the local people. And so he was thinking he wanted to do something to destroy Haridas's reputation. So being the government governor, he called all the prostitutes in the area and had a big meeting with them and said, uh, and he explained his desire. I said, the best of all of you, please come forward. I have a service for you and I want you to, and then he explained, there is this saint, so-called saint, he called him, he didn't give him that credit and he's causing a disturbance. So I want you to, uh, destroy his uh, austerities. So one uh, prostitute, she was the best of all prostitutes. She came forward. She was quite wealthy and also known as the most uh, popular amongst the prostitutes. Her name was, I can't remember, I think Lakshmi something, something Lakshmi. But she said, don't worry, just give me one night with him and I, I will make him fall down. So the governor became excited. He said, I will send my men with you. And as soon as he falls down, we will arrest him. She said, no, no, don't bother. Just give me one night alone. You can bring your men after. So he agreed. Now she came to the hut where Haridas was staying. And there was a little Tulsi plant right outside the hut. And so she offered her respects to the Tulsi plant. This was, we all understand that people in, in Vedic culture, they worship Tulsi Devi 
even if they're ordinary people, they understand Tulsi is very sacred. Tulsi is a great devotee of the Lord. So then she went into the hut where Hari Das, and he was chanting Hare Krishna. And she just quietly sat down in the area where he was chanting. <clears throat> when he noticed she was there, she began to speak and she said, oh, you are such a beautiful, beautiful man and you have so many wonderful qualities. And I am also highly qualified. So I think our union together is ordained by providence. She spoke in an enticing way. Chila Haridas Dakor said, what you're saying is true and I will surely fulfill your desire. But I have one difficulty. I have taken up a vow to chant so many rounds of japa every day, lakshahida, lakshahida. Thank you, thank you very much. That's the process name, lakshahida. <coughs> A laksh, lak means, you know, laks, you know, laks, lak, lakshahida means that she has so many lakhs of wealth. <laughs> that was her name. And so Haridas said, well, I haven't finished my prescribed japa for this month, but sit down and listen. And um, I will uh, satisfy your desires very quickly. So he continued to chant and she continued to sit there and she would, and then Chanting, 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 chanting. And finally, it was so late in the night, it was about 12 o'clock in the night. Haridas turns to, to the prostitute and says, Oh, I'm so sorry. I wasn't able to finish my rounds. Will you come back tomorrow night and surely I will satisfy your desires? So she left. Uh, Ramachandra Khan was eager to hear the report. She said, I, give him, I need another night with him, but surely on this night, I will uh, satisfy your desire. <clears throat> so she came the next night in the evening around six o'clock. She offered her respects to the Tulsi plant, went in and Haridas was chanting again. He said, be patient, I should be done with my rounds very soon. He was chanting, 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 and she was sitting, listening, listening, listening. And then finally it became very late in the night. Again, he turned to her and said, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not able to finish my rounds, but surely I promise tomorrow night, please come back. So again, the next night she returned. Again, she offered her respects to Tulsi Devi, went into the hut, and started to sit and Haridas was chanting, chanting, chanting. Um, and while he, he was chanting, she had been listening <clears throat> to him chanting Japa. And of course, as she was listening, he's chanting pure. He's not chanting Nama Bas or he's not chanting Nama Bara, he's chanting Sudanam pure, the pure sound of Krishna's holy name. And she's listening. And finally, at this particular night, as she was listening, her whole mood was interrupted. And she started to break down and started to cry. She said, oh, I'm so fallen. I'm so sorry. I came was simply to destroy your chanting. But I can see you are a great saint of the Supreme Lord. And she asked, she begged for forgiveness. And then she fell at his feet and she offered respects. And then she said to Haridas Nakur, please give me some service. And he said, all right. And he said to her, he, she said, he said to her, 
I knew all about the plan of, of uh, Ramachandra Khan, and I knew you were about to come, and I was thinking I should leave this place, but then I thought, well, maybe I could offer you some mercy, so I decided to stay. So since you're now begging for the mercy, this is my instructions to you. Go back to your place and give away all of your wealth to the Brahmanas. Come back here, sit down, and in front of the Tulsi plant, chant Hare Krishna. And she immediately left, and the next day, she came back and Srila Haridas Thakur engaged her in chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. And it says in this narration of this particular pastime that she also chanted 333,333 ,333 names of God every day. He empowered her to chant throughout the day. Uh, Prabhupada writes something interesting. Using Haridas Thakur as an example, he says, uh, if we cannot finish our prescribed rounds of chanting Japa, you, we should know we are in a diseased condition. This is the disease of Maya has taken over and therefore we cannot chant our prescribed number of rounds. So um, if Maya becomes too strong, then uh, sometimes we find it very difficult to chant the holy names of the Lord <clears throat> for whatever reason. So Prabhupada's cautioning in us, <coughs> we should always keep our numerical vow foremost in our life and never give up our chanting, no matter what. Srila Prabhupada would say, if you cannot finish your rounds, then you should give up eating and sleeping and, and use that time for chanting. And then of course, he also said that in emergency situation when because of service we don't somehow we don't finish our rounds one day because of maybe a full full day of service then we can chant the remaining rounds the next day along with the prescribed number of rounds for that day also now, but that's a concession it's not it's an emergency situation it is not a standard and it cannot be pushed to the next day after. It has to be done in the immediate after. Say you finish 12 rounds, and the next day you have to chant 20 rounds, four plus 16. Uh, there's another beautiful story to illustrate the power and glory of Srila Haridas Thakur. At one point, Srila Haridas Thakur was living in a cave and in that cave, somewhere farther into the cave, where Haridas was a very deadly poisonous snake. That snake, the poison was so strong that it would just the aroma, or not the aroma, but the the uh, the odor from that poison coming from the snake was so strong that it would keep people away. And many people wanted to come and see Haridas, but they were afraid of the snake. But Haridas didn't, wasn't at all bothered by it. So he was just chanting there and the snake was there. And then uh, the word got out that we want to see Haridas. We want to get his darshan. And uh, We can't because he's living in a cave with a snake. So Haridas 
when he heard that the people were feeling anxious to meet him, to get his, and for him that mean, give, means giving them the chance to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, he decided to leave this, the uh, cave. And as soon as he had decided, something happened. The snake immediately crawled out from its hole in the cave, went right past Haridas, and just went out of the cave. So Krishna in the heart didn't inconvenience Haridas, allowed him to stay in that cave. <clears throat> Haridas would always chant. He would chant 24 hours a day. Now, actually, he would also spend time preaching, but he was always engaged in chanting Hare Krishna, even while he was preaching. There's a beautiful story that while he was living in the cave, the personification of the material energy, Maya Devi herself, came to tempt Haridas. She took the form of a beautiful, beautiful young girl. She came in the dead of night and she came to entice Haridas. When she came, she was offering various types of, uh, I guess the way, voluptuous postures in order to attract the mind of Srila Haridas Thakur. Haridas Thakur kept chanting, chanting, chanting. He was not even in the slightest bit deviated from his chanting. She tried in so many ways to tempt Haridas, she failed. Finally, she revealed herself. She said, I am the personification of the material energy. I've come to test you and I can see that you are the greatest of all devotees, you are not in the least amount disturbed. And you're always chanting Hare Krishna. So she said, previously, Lord Brahma initiated me in the chanting of Hare Ram. But now, seeing you, I want to be initiated in the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. And so uh, Hari Das initiated into the chanting of Hari Krishna. Mm -hmm. So, and then uh, Hari Das gave her initiation. So Hari Das Thakur initiated the personification of the material energy, Maya Devi herself, into the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Now we come to the verse where the disappearance of Haridas Thakur. Uh, Haridas Thakur was getting older and older and it became more difficult for him to chant his rounds. Finally, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to see him. And uh, when he saw Srila Haridas Thakur, Haridas Thakur offered his respects to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Lord Chaitanya said to Srila Haridas Thakur, what is the news? And uh, Srila Haridas Thakur said, the news is your mercy upon me. That is the news. <laughs> so he was simply glorifying the Lord's mercy upon him himself. The Lord would come and visit him every day and bring him prasadam. And then he said to Haridas, what is the problem? Haridas said, I'm finding it difficult to, to keep my numerical vow in chanting in the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. He wasn't able to chant his 192 rounds with becoming more difficult. The Lord told him no need you already have achieved perfection. You may reduce the number of rounds. And then one day when he came, Lord Chaitanya came, 
Haridas Thakur was barely moving. His body was now feeling the pains of old age. And uh, the devotees also came. And Srila Haridas was there. And there was a slight exchange between the two. And then Haridas told the Lord, my dear Lord, I want to give up this body. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wasn't so happy to hear that. The Lord, but, but then he could understand that Haridas was determined. He said, um, well, actually, the Lord started to glorify Haridas in different ways. And now it was time for Haridas to leave the body. So he took the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he placed those feet on his heart. And while staring into the beautiful face of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, he disappeared. Now this verse, See Krishna Chaitanya Sabda Karide Ucharanu Namera Sahaprana Uta Kala. See Krishna Chaitanya Sabda Karita Ucharanana Namera Sahita Prana. Kaila Ukramana. While chanting the holy name of Sri Krishna Chaitanya, he gave up his life there and left his body. Next verse. Maha Yogeshwar Prahadeki Swachane Marana Vishmera Nirjana Sabara Aila Smarana. Seeing the wonderful death of Haridas Thakur by his own will, which was just like the great mystic yogis, everyone remembered the passing away of Bhishma. Next verse. There was a tumultuous noise as they all chanted the holy names Hari and Krishna. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became overwhelmed with ecstatic love. The Lord raised the body of Haridas Thakur and placed it on his lap. Then he began to dance in the courtyard in a great ecstatic love. Because of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's ecstatic love, all the devotees were helpless. In an ecstatic love, they also began to dance and chant congregationally. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu danced for some time and then Sarup Damodar informed him of, of other rituals for the body of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And that's beautiful how it goes on. We can read a little bit more because it's so very beautiful what happens now. The body of Haritas Thakur was then raised on a carrier that resembled an airship and taken to the sea accompanied by congregational chanting. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu danced in front of the procession and Vakrishwar Pandit, along with others, devotees chanted and danced behind him. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu bathed the body of Haridas in the sea and then declared, from this day on, this sea has become a great pilgrimage site. Everyone drank the water that had touched the lotus feet of Srila Haridas Thakur, and then they smeared remnants of Lord Jagannath's sandalwood pulp all over Haridas Thakur's body. After a hole was dug in the sand, the body of Haridas was placed into it. Remnants from Lord Jagannath, such as silken ropes, sandalwood paste, food and cloth were placed on the body. All around the body, the devotees performed congregational chanting and Vakreshwar Pandit danced in jubilation. 
with his transcendental hand, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally covered the body of Srila Haridas Thakur with sand saying, chanting, Harimo! Harimo! The devotees covered the body of Haridas Thakur with sand and then constructed a platform upon the site. The platform was protected all around by fencing. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu danced and chanted all around the platform. And as the holy name of Har Hari roared tumultuously, the entire universe became filled with the vibration. Hariwo, Hariwo. After Sankirtan, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu bathed in the sea with his devotees, swimming and playing in the water in great jubilation. After circulating, circumambulating the tomb of Srila Haridas, of course, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to the Singha Dora gate of the Jagannath temple. The whole city chanted in congregation and the tumultuous sound vibrated all over the city. Approaching the Singha Dora gate, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spread his cloth and began to beg prasadam from all the shopkeepers. I am begging Prashadam for a festival honoring the passing of Haridas Thakur, the Lord says. Please give me alms. Hearing this, all the shopkeepers came, immediately came forward, big baskets of Prashad, which they jubilantly delivered to Lord Chaitanya. However, Srup Damodar Goswami stopped them and the shopkeepers returned to their shops and sat down with their baskets. Srup Damodar sent Sri Chaitanya back to his residence and kept with him four Vaishnavas and four servant carriers. Srup Damodar said to all our shopkeepers, deliver to me four palmfuls of prashadam from each and every item in this way in, the, in this way varieties of prashadam were collected and packed up in different loads and carried on the heads of four servants not only did sarup damara goswami bring prashadam but vani nath patanyaka and kashi mishra also went with large quantities also sent large quantities Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu made all the devotees sit in rows and person began to distribute the prashad, assisted by four men. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was not accustomed to take prashadam in small quantities. He therefore put on each plate what at least five men could eat. Damodar Goswami requested Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, please sit down and watch with these men to help me. I shall distribute the prashadam. The four men, Srup Damodar, Jagadananda, Kashibara, and Shankara, Sankara, distributed the prashadam continuous. Shankara, Shankara. All of the devotees who sat down would not eat prashadam as long as the Lord had not eaten. On that day, however, Kashi Mishra had extended an invitation to the Lord. Therefore, Kashi Mishra personally went there and delivered prashadam to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and, and with great attention made him eat. <clears throat> Paramananda. Parmananda Puri and Brahmananda Bharati. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sat down and accepted the prashadam. When he began to eat, eat, so did all the Vaishnavas. Everyone was filled up to the neck because Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu kept telling the distributors, give them more, give them more. All the devotees finished accepting prashadam and washed their hands and mouth. 
Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu decorated each of them with a flower garland and sandalwood paste. Overwhelmed with ecstatic love, Sri Chaitanya offered a benediction to all the devotees, which all the devotees heard with great satisfaction. And this is a powerful verse. Uh, actually, go, go to the uh, Bengali above. Hari dasa vio jasa se kala dasana ye ihan vitta kaila ye kaila kirtana ye tanra valuka dite karala gamana tara madhya mahotsave ye kala bojana achire haibe ta sambara krishna prapti hari dasa darshan darasane koi ache sakti Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave this benediction. Anyone who has seen the festival of Srila Haridas Thakur passing away, anyone who has chanted and danced here, anyone who has offered sand on the body of Haridas Thakur, and anyone who has joined this festival to partake of the Vrishadam will achieve the favor of Krishna very soon. There is such wonderful power in Sri Sila Hari Das Thakur. Being merciful upon me, Krishna gave me the association of Hari Das Thakur. Being independent in his desires, he has now broken that association. There's a beautiful verse coming up some very soon. When Srila Haridas Thakur wanted to leave this material world, it was not within my power to detain him. Simply by his will, Haridas Thakur could give up his life and go away, exactly like Bhishma, who previously died simply by his own desire, as we have heard from Shastra. Here is the verse, Haridasa Achle. Priti Vir Siromani, Tahavina Ratna Suna Hoila Badini. Haridas was the crown jewel on the head of this world. Without him, the world is now bereft of its valuable jewel. Sri Chaitanya Mahavadan told everyone, say all glories to Haridas the core and chant the holy name of Hari, saying this, he personally began to dance. Everyone began to chant all glories to Haridas Thakur, who revealed the importance of chanting the holy name of the Lord. Thereafter, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu bade farewell to all the devotees, and he himself, with mixed feelings of happiness and distress, took rest till he can stop there. Now this is the beautiful narration of the glorious disappearance of Srila Haridas Thakur and a little bit about the glories of his life, which is the foundation for the, for the essential teachings that Srila Prabhupada has given us about our progress in devotional service. Srila Haridas Thakur exemplified the Yuga Dharma in such a wonderful way. He taught it by his example. He taught it by his preaching that to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, there is nothing greater, there is nothing higher, there is nothing more pleasing to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So this is a little bit, a little bit of some of the amazing pastimes of the life of, of Namacharya Srila Haridas Thakur. Therefore, we should pray to Srila Haridas Thakur. Please inspire me to chant the holy name of the Lord in such a way that this my chanting will be very 
will be accepted as the, at the lotus feet of Sri Krishna himself. In a beautiful book written by Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur called Harinam Chintamani, he quotes many verses by Srila Haridas Thakur in the glories of chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra. In fact, the entire book is simply all about Haridas Thakur's instructions in chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. And you can see Hari Das Thakur chanted so many rounds and Prabhupada also instructed us that we should not simply be satisfied with chanting 16 rounds. We should chant as much as we can. In fact, he said you should chant always. <laughs> we, can chant, uh, we can chant 16 rounds on the beads we can chant more rounds on the beads. We can chant 16 rounds on the beads and innumerable rounds off the beads. But the idea is to chant. I find so many people that I meet who come to programs who are attracted to Krishna consciousness, but somehow or other cannot understand the glories, the power, and the mercy of Krishna's holy name, they somehow or other cannot get it. And I'm thinking there must be something in their life that is blocking for them from understanding a little bit, just a fraction of the glories of the holy name. Because when one understands just a small fraction, he will be chanting his whole life. <laughs> and that is the glories. And that is what Srila Hari does, taught to us. Where that place where they perform that ceremony for the burial of Hari Das Thakur, a beautiful temple has come up on that area. And it's a, uh, it's a beautiful temple. And you go there. And you sit and you, in, and you go inside and you chant. And there's deities of Lord Chaitanya. There's deities of Lord Nityananda. There's a deity of Advaita Charya. All are in the position of chanting Japa. All around the inside of the Mandir, there are beautiful pictures depicting the life of Srila Haridas Thakur. And also in the center of the Mandir, there is another small enclosure, and inside there is a beautiful monument, or you might say tribute to Srila Haridas Thakur, um, that people actually take darshan on. It's, it's his bed and a place where he used to chant japa. Um, devotees go there. And it's understood by going there and chanting Hare Krishna. Um, one's chanting will be nice. I remember my own personal experience when I sat down because everyone inside is just chanting Hare Krishna. If they're not chanting Hare Krishna, they're doing some quiet bhajans, which is the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So only Hare Krishna goes on in that particular Mandir. Okay, so this is a little bit, a small drop to the glories of Srila Namachari Haridas Thakur. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, uh, for nicely uh, narrating these pastimes. Thank you so much. Uh, devotees, if you have any questions or comments or realizations, uh, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Oh, glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare um, Actually, I was chanting yesterday on my Japa beat and suddenly it became uh, so sweet that I was wondering how, uh, 
how could we keep this that sweetness of the holy name when we that's, can't that's, our beat? that's you can't keep it that's krishna's mercy that's all <laughs> oh. that's, that's, oh. that's that's simply the mercy of krishna coming through it's it's causeless mercy that's really? all yeah I felt so loved suddenly, and I felt so much love to to give also. It was so nice. Yeah, it's sweet. That's Krishna's mercy. He can give it. He can take it away. He can give it again. You can never tell when it's going to come. It may come when you least expect it. And when you do expect it, it may not come. It's just Krishna's mercy. <laughs> Oh, wow. It's really amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is, it is amazing. <laughs> I was thinking it, you know, that maybe it's, it's even your mercy. Yeah, we are, I think every devotee has had that experience. That happened to me when I was in Mayapur one time during the Japa session. The, man, the mantra was so powerful, so available, and so all-pervading that even if my attention went away for a while, it was still there and so strong. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's that simply causes mercy. That's all. you can't do anything to make it come. And you can only be grateful to Krishna when it does come. Oh, I do. I'm so, so grateful. Thank you so much. Krishna. Nice. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisance. Uh, all glories to Shri Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. Um, uh, yeah, it was really a power pack lecture, Maharaj. Uh, maybe it was just a drop, but still it was power pack. Um, I I wanted to know what uh, what does Nama Bas mean? Nama Bas sometimes we describe it in a, in a, by using an analogy, and I'll explain a little bit more after I give the analogy. The sky is cloudy and one cannot see the sun at all. But somehow there's a little parting of the clouds and a ray of the sign, sunshine comes through the cloud. Now, that analogy is used to say that at a certain stage, the pure ray of Krishna's holy name will peek through the clouds of our material consciousness <laughs> and somehow or other give us a little bit of an indication of the glories of the holy name. And there's two kinds of maha, uh, uh, namabhas. One is called chaya namabhas. And there's another one I forgot the other one. The other one is the Mayavadis talk about it. The Chaya Nahabas is what I'm referring to. That means that when we get to the stage of actively trying to eliminate the offenses, chanting Hare Krishna means chanting the holy name and carefully avoiding the offenses. When those offenses start to go down, disappear, what comes is the ray of the beauty of the Krishna's holy name. And that is the Namabha stage. 
it's not the highest state. It's the Pratibimba Namabas is one. Uta Bhavra, you want to explain this a little bit more? Hare Krishna Maharaj. First of all, thank you for a wonderful class. Um, I recall it from Harinam Chintamni, but I don't recall the explanation. So I'm just listening to learn. Yeah, your Guru Maharaj writes about it in his book, uh, Madhurya Kandambini, I think. Is it reflections to, uh, yeah, on Harinam Chintamani? Yeah, oh, it's uh, also there too. Ah. Um, if devotees are a little patient, I can go to my notes and give a more of a clear and detailed description of the answer. I'll, uh, I'll try to do that. I'll go try to go to my notes and find a more complete description of the stage of Namabas given by His Holiness uh, Bhakti Tirtha Swami Maharaj. Let me see where that is. Hmm. Now I have to determine where it is. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, I think we can, yeah. Arinam Chintamani. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find that one explanation by Bhakti Tirtha Swami Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Let's 
somehow I'm not able to locate it. I'll try one more place and let's see if this is the place. I can't seem to locate it for some reason. Bhakti Tirta Swami gives a nice description. Hmm? Oh, wait a minute, I think I found something. Let's see. No, I'm not able to locate it here. Try one more place. If it's not here, then it's not anywhere. It's worth finding. Let me see here. I don't know. I think I failed. <laughs> I'm not able to locate it. But it's 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 the light before the before the bright light. It's a glimmer of the, the glories of the holy name. Is it like the analogy uh, can be like the silver lining of the cloud, which we see many times? Mm, that, that's, that's also an analogy that's used. But silver lining means something good is about to happen in an, in an apparent uh, uh, difficult situation. That's what that means. Mm -hmm. Silver lining means something looks bad, but there is something good coming. Mm -hmm. Okay, Maharaj, I'll try to find something on Namapas. Um, thank you. Uh, for I've, seen it. I've seen it so many times in my notes, but now I... I can't seem to locate it. I don't know for whatever reason. It's okay, Maharaj. <laughs> Someday when you locate it, you can tell me. <laughs> yeah, I can send it. Okay. Okay, and uh, one more thing I wanted to share, Maharaj. Uh, so tomorrow is the uh, Vajra Purnima, and uh, I am inviting Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, so. And I wanted your blessing that I sincerely study Srimad Bhagavatam for my entire life. So with oh, that. 
Yeah, pray to Sanatana Goswami. He is the blessing giver when it comes to Srimad Bhagavatam. He has written prayers and glorification of Bhagavatam. His prayers about Bhagavatam uh, glorify the importance of reading Srimad Bhagavatam and the glories of Srimad Bhagavatam. Those prayers are very powerful. Devotees read those prayers before reading the Bhagavatam, sometimes in order to go to have the mercy to go deeper into the Srimad Bhagavatam. So prayers by Sanatana Goswami in glorification of Srimad Bhagavatam. I'll post it on the conference as soon as we conclude our session today. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Yeah, and if you and just, you, if you regulate your day-to-day -day life around Bhagavatam, in other words, make that a part of your regular day, put it in a schedule, every day you'll have the opportunity to read it. Yes, Maharaj, that is what I'm planning to, at least one shloka a day, at least. Yeah, and purple. Yes, and purple. <laughs> yes, of course. And of course, uh, I, I am trying to finish my Canto one uh, by the end of this month. So that is yeah. one more thing. Yeah, Bhagavatam is the best because Bhagavatam is Krishna in literary form. It deals with pure devotional service. It takes one's it takes one's mind into the deeper aspects of Krishna's leelas, and it gives the nice explanations of all subject matters that are relevant in our life. Srila Prabhupada has often stated that Srimad Bhagavatam deals with every subject that you need to hear or know about. Economics, social, political, ecclesiastical, spiritual, Everything is in Bhagavatam. But the most important thing is that it's it's the glories of the Supreme Personality of that. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. It's the best of all scriptures. Devotees, any more questions or comments? And Dishanti Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, can you just repeat what's the name of the uh, Bhaktivinoda course book about uh, Haridas Thakur's chanting uh, recommendations? Hari Nam Chintamani. Thank you. There's a couple versions out hmm. available in this kind. Okay, thank you very much. And we'll see everyone tomorrow for our next session. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai. Namacharya Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai. Mahamot Suvatiro Bhav. Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai. Thank you for a wonderful class, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Bhuta Bhavana. Wherever you are, everything becomes auspicious. <laughs> Only by your blessings, Maharaj. Only by your blessings. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Viva. Uh, Guru Maharaj, um, with your permission, can we wish you happy Vyasa Puja Day today? No. <laughs> 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 Please sir, give us a chance, Maharaj. Well, I'm in the house of Abhiram Saka here in North Carolina, and today is his Vyasa Puja. 
Lalita Tangi can testify to that. So, we are very, very grateful for your association, Maharaj. Uh, it cannot be a coincidence. You were born on the day uh, Srila Haridas Thakur left. Worshipping him, absorbed in his teachings, exemplifying humility and other Vaishnava qualities, you elevate us by your association. We worship you today. May we remain at your lotus feet, serving the complete. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you, Lalita Tangi. You are one of the pillars of the North Carolina Yatra that developed so nicely. But now you have escaped. And <laughs> The, the house of North Carolina's palace is getting weak. <laughs> Maharaj, it's your mercy. The first time you came, you stayed for one day, then it was two days, then three days, then one week. So year after year, you have drenched us by with your association and that's the reason uh, we are still chanting, Maharaj. You should see Atar, you know Atarva, right? He's, he's become so expert in kirtan, amazing. You know, before when I used to come here, he would, he would never, he would just play cartels or do something. Now he's singing bhajans and he knows like so many beautiful melodies and he sings so nicely. I think somehow or other your family blessed him. <laughs> we are blessed, all blessed by you and his family, Maharaj. Your children also are also like kirtaneers. So nice. They must have, they must have rubbed off from <laughs> them. <laughs> we rub off from Atarva Maharaj. And I mean, he's so enthusiastic in kirtan. He nonstop, he sang for like three hours and we were all dancing. And Your son? <laughs> Who's that? Atarva. Atarva was singing <laughs> nonstop for three hours. Oh. And it was like we were dancing. Uh, it was very wonderful in a house program. Yeah, he makes people dance. <laughs> and he sings so beautifully too. He, he puts, he's like a, it's like natural for him. It's just so, just flows so sweetly. And, and it's amazing. He sings all the melodies that I like the best. And I, and I never tell him to sing anything. He just chooses it. <laughs> it's your mercy, Maharaj. Last night he came up and he had, a, he had a question and I couldn't answer it. So I made up an answer to make him feel good. <laughs> he says, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that of the Vedas, I am Yajur, uh, I'm, I'm Yajir Saba and uh, Rig Veda. And he said, Atar was not even mentioned there. Because <laughs> Krishna does say, he said, of, of, of the Vedas, I'm Yajir Saba and Rig. If it doesn't mention Atar, <laughs> so he wanted to know why. <laughs> so what, what I said, I said, well, I think uh, Atharva Veda is, is re relegated to Radharani and she's higher. So <laughs> I just made up an answer. <laughs> I didn't know what to say. <laughs> Unless you have an insight on how to answer that question. Uh, I remember reading in uh, Bhagavatam Maharaj, I'm not sure, I will try to look for the reference that uh, Prabhupada mentions that when it was one Veda, it was called Atharva, Atharva Veda. And then when uh, Vyasadeva um, divided into three, it was Rik, Sama and Yajur and the rest, whatever was left in the original was Atharva. So in that he mentions that original was Atharva Veda. Uh, I'll try to look for the reference. Maharaj. Yeah, I think you're right, because out of the Vedas, the most philosophical of the all four of them are the Atharva Veda, out of, you know, from, from the philosophical point of view. Shama Veda and Yajur Veda, and Yajur Veda is mostly sacrifice, 
Samavedas, and there's many prayers and, and, and hymns and songs. And Rig Veda, there's a combination of everything in there. But uh, Adharva Veda, I think, is mostly philosophy. <laughs> I wasn't able to answer the question. <laughs> we had a nice program last night. We spoke on Bhakti Vinod Thakur. I We were hearing Maharaj. It was so nice in the evening. Oh, uh, come, come. There's a person I want you to meet. He's coming right in front of my screen now. What? Come into the screen. Come on down a little bit. Hare Krishna. Hare Bol. Hare Krishna. Jai. Hare Bol. Hare Bol. I'm going to give it back to him. Hare Krishna. To you. Hare Krishna. To you. Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj. Hare Krishna, to you. They gave us with you. Abhi Ram Saka gave me his cake. Thank you, Abhi Ram Saka. Lalita Tungi is there. Yeah, I can see it. Actually. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah. Lalita, open up your whole video. Come back on. Full force. Can you do that? She's, um, yeah, one second, good minute. Put her on. Yes. Um, You're coming close. There you go. <laughs> All your friends are here. <laughs> What, what should I do with this cake? <laughs> it's like it all, all <laughs> <laughs> it's it's actually it's 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 an interesting color. It's, it's your color, Maharaj. <laughs> I know. I even I even have my mask is colored saffron too. <laughs> Everything about me is saffron. Should I tell you a, a funny story? <laughs> One time I was in Bhakti Vedanta Manor in London, and it was John Mastami. And so and they had the altar all decorated up really nicely, and they had all these cowherd boys on the altar. And the cowherd boys were wearing, wearing these beautiful colored clothes, green and blue and red and all kinds of nice colors. And I'm looking at the, the altar and I'm saying, wow, I'd like to wear some of those colors. <laughs> but then I thought, well, I'm not allowed to, so I will. <laughs> so that was in the morning. Later on that day, I came into the manor. I put my shoes down and I went upstairs. When I came back, my shoes were gone. <laughs> and I'm looking all over. It's a pair of Crocs. I can't find them anywhere. So then the ladies in the kitchen, all these ladies, they came out. They said, we, well, Maharaj, we got some shoes for you. <laughs> <laughs> so they came out with these bright yellow shoes. <laughs> and so they said, here, you can wear these. And I had no other pair of shoes to wear, so I thought, why not? <laughs> <laughs> so I put on these yellow shoes, and I was thinking, Krishna's really funny, you know. He's, he's playing a joke on me, because I wanted to wear bright colors, and so he arranged for somebody to steal my shoes. <laughs> so I could wear yellow <laughs> shoes. <laughs> Instant reciprocation, Maharaj. Yeah, I, I, I will, now I'm careful what I desire now. <laughs> <laughs> Can I offer you a piece of cake? Yes, Maharaj. Thank you so much for giving us this uh, opportunity. Basically, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, uh, this is this. I just wanted to read one more line from from the purport of uh, Bhagavad Gita, eighteen point seventy five. Uh, the spiritual master is a representative of Vyasadev also. Therefore, according to the Vedic system, on the birthday of the spiritual master, the disciples conduct the ceremony called Vyasa Puja. So, thank you, Maharaj, for accepting our very uh, primitive, modest worship. <laughs> Colorful cake. <laughs> Uh, thank you. The devotees are so kind and merciful. Yeah. Prabhupada said, without my devotees, I cannot do anything. He always gave so much credit to his disciples and followers. So in the same way, we can speak and we can somehow or other make some effort, but by the devotees, everything becomes wonderful. <laughs> so the devotees become our life. Without the devotees, there's no hope. We're nothing. Thank you for accepting and uh, giving such a wonderful God family, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. And Abhiram Sak is here too. He's right behind me. Happy and Krishna conscious birthday. Today is, his, today is his birthday. More so than mine because this is his house. <laughs> this is Jagannath's house, Maharaj. And you have all the rights to stay here. <laughs> did you see what he did? He bought a mansion now. Yes. Before he had a little bhajan kutir. Now he has a mansion. Yes, it was. I told him when I first got to his house, I need a map. <laughs> <laughs> I can't find my way around. <laughs> Get lost and can't find the, the main room anymore. <laughs> okay, I would like to share this cake with everybody. Yes, good But how do I do that? Vrindavanath, would you like a piece of cake? <laughs> <laughs> Your blessings are Guru Maharaj, they are in form of cake, so thank you. <laughs> Adi Bo, here, hey, comes the, here comes the original Kirtaneers from North Carolina, they're entering in. These are the guys that inspired everybody in Kirtan. No problem, no. Adibo, Adibo. Are you, uh, are you giving Kirtan mercy to the Torontoites? I <laughs> know <laughs> I'm getting mercy from the time so <laughs> I'm afraid to ask what kind of mercy that is <laughs> yeah. when we went to Ratyatra Bhakti Marga Maharaj was doing a very very enthusiastic ecstatic kirtan and uh, he also was there in the party singing along it was so wonderful that was this year yeah. This year, yeah. The, they, did they go down um, Young Avenue? No, they did not go down. They brought Jagannath in the car and they uh, brought him into different Hindu temples around the greater Toronto region. So devotees uh, can come there and take darshan. So Maharaj was there and he was singing uh, Kirtan. I now I know why you left North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> Toronto Rathiyatra has to be one of the best Rathiyatras anywhere in the world. Yeah, but we weren't, uh, like, because of COVID, they, we didn't have like, the full Rathiyatra experience. Hopefully it's there next year. But Next year. It's, it's like two days of celebrations in the most amazing way. Yeah, even everybody in Toronto seems to know about it, even if they're devotees or not. But it's quite famous among all the citizens here that you know they uh, they do the two day program in the island grounds and it's even the immigration officers know because <laughs> <laughs> they always ask me when I come in what are you going to do I say I'm going to the parade <laughs> 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 yeah it's so it's so beautiful three full carts 
and hundreds of devotees. Then when we get into the tunnel, and then they have the kirtan in the tunnel. Wow. It's just like echoes everywhere. It's beautiful. Yeah, so at least you're still connected with Jagannath. You didn't yeah. leave Jagannath anyway. <laughs> By your mercy, uh, Jagannath is keeping us in, uh, with, in touch with the devotees and some seva. Jagannath is, is one of the most merciful manifestations of Krishna. He's so personal. And he's always uh, he's always playing tricks on his devotees. So. <laughs> he likes to do that. Maybe you'll experience it someday. Okay. Thank you. Nice to see everyone. Thank this you, is a very wonderful day, the, the disappearance day of Srila Haridas. Today is author also Ananta Chaturdasi which is not a small ceremony. It's a very big ceremony in South, South India and it glorifies Lord Vishnu. I'm not too sure of the details of the ceremony, but Srila Prabhupada mentions this as one of the important celebration days in, in worshiping the Supreme Personality of God. You can't see it, but there's a whole group of nice Vaishnavas all around here, all waiting for the cake. <laughs> <laughs> Please cut the cake, Guru Maharaj. Please cut the yeah. cake. I'm afraid to cut it because I might have to, I might have to eat it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. We'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Happy Vyasa Puja again. Once again, Guru Maharaj. Okay. <laughs> Happy appearance, Guru Maharaj. They forgot the candles. <laughs> because they couldn't count that high. <laughs> Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Good morning. Hare Krishna.